Hello, and welcome to our commentary track for Army of Darkness. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. I am Rich Evans. And that's Bruce Campbell's feet. Oh, my God. And that's Bruce Campbell. And his his stump that is stuck in that thing, even though it makes no sense. And he can easily remove it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sam Raimi, the director of The Evil Dead. I've invited to, to see my new movie... Say you, uh, you think this will scare the audience as much as the first one? Yeah, that's a safe bet. Oh, yeah, it's got a lot in it to uh, grab the audience. So we're watching Army of Darkness, and this is one of the worst movies ever made. <laughs> Let's all make fun of this movie. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you notice uh, here the housewares department, like the sign placement and everything looks different than it does at the end of the film. Because this was a part of the original filming, and the ending was a reshoot. Oh, my God. The redone God. ending. And that was Bridget Fonda for some reason. She nope. wanted to be in an Evil Dead. I think she just, yeah, she's a fan. It would make sense. She ends up in uh, A Simple Plan later. Sam Raimi put her in another movie. Um, but I was going to say it would make sense if it was, like, Holly Hunter or something, because there was a period of time when, like, Sam Raimi and the Coen brothers and, like, Holly Hunter all lived in a house together. <laughs> like, when they were all starting out in Hollywood. <laughs> But this is footage from Evil Dead 2. This opening recap of the, the first two Evil Dead movies is a combination of footage from Evil Dead 2 and uh, reshot stuff. Like when he cuts his hand off, it's a, a reshoot because they didn't want it to be as bloody. Yeah, that's one thing I, I I noticed watching this movie is that it has an R rating. Yes. It really shouldn't? It shouldn't. It would. They try, made it with the intention of it being PG-13, but for whatever reason, the ratings board just kept coming back with an R. Oh, really? And that, well, I could think of one particular scene that made it, makes it R, but uh, he's because he says fuck once. You can say fuck he, once in a PG-13. Yes. Yeah. He's like, get the fuck out of my way when, he, <laughs> um, when he's coming back with the book. Yeah. Yeah, Grace, Grace. Get the fuck out of my face. Um, I would, I would, I would venture to guess it's the the fountain of human blood. That get, gives it the R rating. The the fountain of Kool Aid, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> and then they said, yeah, yeah, you can't show that. I mean, I was a producer of the remake of Evil Dead. It's a really bloody movie. It's a really bloody movie. We sailed through the ratings. It's all a crock of shit. Anyway, this movie should be rated PG. You know, my 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 mother used to love horror movies, and she'd have us watch horror movies all the time. And I I vaguely remember watching this with her as a kid and she didn't know it was a sequel to Evil Dead 2 and we got to this and she's like oh it's the guy from that movie <laughs> well that's that's the most baffling thing is that this movie it wasn't produced by Universal Pictures it was like picked up for US distribution by Universal but the idea that they thought they could market it as just like a standalone movie is so baffling was there like just talks of calling it Evil Dead 3 uh, well, I think Sam Raimi wanted to call it the Medieval Dead, which is very clever. It is. Um, yeah. But no, it's just Army of Darkness. I, I think they kind of wanted it to sort of work as a standalone movie, but I mean, all this opening is just like, if it was a, uh, just its own movie, I this is all that, so baffling. Sorry, I always <laughs> hate that you could see those boards. Oh, yeah. That drives me nuts. That was a shot from Evil Dead 2, and then we cut to this shot, which was shot for Army of Darkness, and like the color temperature is completely different. The location oh, right. isn't the same at all. <laughs> oh, that's the right. Fan. The original ending, and then they they what is, what happens? They uh, a horrible flying hag monster yeah. flies in and, and he Nash shoots, shoots his head off. It's like a truncated version of this opening. Yeah. That's right. Well, it's a truncated version of the whole movie because then they're like, "Hail he who's yeah. come from the sky." Yeah, right, right. And that and then kind goes, of happens later in this. He starts going, "No, no, no!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a yes, great ending. That's right. That's right. It's been a while since I've seen Evil Dead too. This is one of the most bizarre series of movies ever made, as far as none of them being similar in any way tonally. Do people generally like this more than Evil Dead 2? I think Evil Dead 2 is the most well-liked. Yeah. Be be well, it's the best. It is. <laughs> 
but we're t- we're talking about Army of Darkness, but Evil Dead Two is the best, I in my opinion. But that's the thing is like you have Evil Dead, which is super cheap and rough around the edges, but it's basically a straight horror movie. Mm-hmm. Evil Dead Two, which is like a weirdo horror comedy, and then this, which is more of like just an adventure slapstick comedy. There's not a whole lot of horror in this film. This is the Gremlins too of the Gremlins series. Yes, yes. It gets very Looney Tunes. So does Evil Dead too. Honestly, it does. But yeah. it still is a is a horror film. Yeah. Um. The this I mean this is just pure goofiness. Well, the horror pretext has been dropped. Yes. There's no uh, Three Stooges bit in Evil Dead too, as far as I oh, remember. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Technically, there is. There is. Oh. What what is that? Jay? When when you... the when the uh, the creature in the basement when they they stomp on its head and its eyeball pops out mm. and it lands in the the girl's mouth that's directly from a Three Stooges movie, mm. but it works as a horror sequence as well. A very silly one, but yeah. But this one is like goofy comical skeletons and <laughs> poking him in the eyes. I mean, it's nonsense. Before the Evil Dead, my par- my friends and myself, just a group of school chums. And, and, and I would make Super 8 uh, comedies, Three Stooges comedies. Control yourselves. You would hit a man with glasses, would you? Oh, oh my, my glasses. Let's see. Uh, what? Ah, there they are. Ah, oh, my glasses. Oh, it's you, Paul. I'm glad I ran across you. <laughs> Why are the Three Stooges such an influence on you? What do you like about them? I like the fact I like their physical comedy and their sound effects. <laughs> you know the the hyper real uh, shticks that they do, and um, they just make me laugh. Wow, Europe really looks like Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they could be in like like Spain or something, right? <laughs> well, that's not very likely. Now, I never noticed this until I, I watch this on Blu-ray, but uh, Henry the Red, uh, all of his men are, are gingers. <laughs> I don't think I ever noticed that either. Yeah. Like the, it's, oh, yeah. They're all redheads. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, wait a minute. You, you got to understand, man. I, I, I never even saw these assholes before. I don't know why some of this stuff is just so funny. I think it's just performance. As far as a comedic performance goes, this is my favorite Bruce yeah. Campbell performance. Yeah. As far as a physical performance, probably Evil Dead 2 when he's doing all the, uh, when his hand's possessed and he's, you know, flipping himself over in the kitchen and everything. But as far as just a straight, I mean, this is what kind of cemented the Bruce Campbell persona. Mm-hmm. The, the sort of cocky, but also incredibly dumb. Which is another interesting thing about this series, and that each iteration, Ash just gets dumber. <laughs> the first first movie is like a college know, guy. Second movie yeah. is a little silly, and then this is like nonsense. And then Ash versus Evil Dead, he's even dumber. I don't know if I'd call him dumb so much as selfish and overly cocky, monstrous. Yeah. yeah. Was Big Trouble in Little China an influence? It's similar, where you take like an action hero protagonist, but he's also kind of a incompetent boob yeah that's true yeah it's very reminiscent of that sure i don't yeah i don't know if it was an intentional influence or not this feels more that's the weird thing about this movie it's like this big adventure you know time travel swashbuckling thing and then sam raimi's just like but then the lead will be bruce campbell (laughs) well that's that's your gimmick the whole the whole movie's a joke Which is, again, why it's weird that, like, you kind of have to be in on the joke to get the movie. Mm -hmm. Like, did either of you see this in the theater? I did. You did? Oh, okay. I thought I might be the only one. No, Um, a a friend of mine was into Evil Dead. Oh, okay. And Evil Dead 2. I think I saw this at the Dollar Show. (laughs) I mentioned it because my dad took me to see it because it was rated R, so I couldn't get in. And I was really excited to check it out. And at the end of the movie, he just goes, I don't know what the hell was happening in the entire movie. <laughs> That's pretty clear, though. <laughs> I think it was I, maybe it was the tone threw him off. Yeah. Because it's like, what is this? It's like nonsense. 
Those girls were watching a scene from a horror film called Evil Dead 1, which broke all financial records in the cinema and as a home video when released four years ago. Yet it was uh, attacked by some as being no more than a video nasty, and the Department of uh, Public Prosecutions took court action to ban it. You, you still seem to have in that film an obsession with, with mutilating the human form. I mean, is that what's necessary these days to bring the thousands of people into the cinemas to watch that kind of movie? Um... Actually, it's Evil Dead is a story of uh, demonic spirits, uh, and it's really a battle of man versus monster. Would you let your it. kids watch any, any anything at all like this? Have you have you got any children? And some of the the gruesome, grotesque, and gratuitous violence, simply for the sake of showing violence. Not only did it make me feel sick, but also it quite clearly is working away at people's sensitivities. <laughs> And that's what's crazy is like Universal tried to sell because I how I found out about this movie was uh, through the trailer that said like from Sam Raimi, director of Darkman. And I liked Darkman, uh, but I didn't know what this was. And then I read in Fangoria it was a sequel to these Evil Dead movies. Did Darkman come out before this? Yeah. Holy Co shit. Co a couple years before it. Which also makes this movie funnier because it's like, oh, Sam Raimi, a, a modest hit with Darkman. He's going to follow it up with this Evil Dead sequel. shoot scenes like this with the arrow the, the camera's following the arrow and well this is he yeah. sped up like like cartoon <laughs> it's like, like uh, it's um, classic Sam Raimi stuff uh, yeah it's I, lo I love shots like this where there's there's a lot of scenes like this where the camera moves and all these characters either come into frame um, this is just super long yeah uh, camera move there's one where after he defeats everybody um, or the bad guys, the camera's moving back and all these main characters are kind of stepping into frame. One after oh, the other. yeah. There's there's really cinematic shots and then there's slapstick. L nonsense. Lock down the camera and, and throw rubber skeletons at Bruce Campbell. Right, right, right. <laughs> or 10 minutes of, uh, of slapstick with skeleton hands hitting him in the eyes. <laughs> And, uh, and Looney Tunes sound effects. <laughs> if you have it, you don't need it. If you need it, you don't have it. Why didn't Bruce Campbell become a bigger star? I mean, obviously, he's big in, in the right circles. Yeah, he's big in B-movie circles. But he was never a big star. And why isn't, why isn't that the case? He's funny as fuck. I don't know. It just never really happened. Is he a good actor? Actor? Well, you don't put him in in like serious dramatic roles. You find a goofy comedy and you put him in that. Like a like a buddy cop movie kind sure. of thing. Sure. Yeah, I guess. Uh... Bruce Campbell starred in every Super Eight movie that we made because very simply he was the good looking one and still is. So we said, hmm, the girls like you. We'll put you in front of the camera. The girls don't like us. We'll stay behind the camera. And. Uh... And he's got like the like the leading man looks like he looks like an action star. Oh, look, you can see the woman's head on the side of the frame. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can see her hair a little bit there. This is a great little set, too. Mm -hmm. And you can see her laying down. Look at that. This movie's a mess. It's terrible. <laughs> I told you when this started, this is the worst movie. It's true. Oh, my God. There's so many mistakes. Yeah. And bad things. Well, in that's this that's movie. part of the I mean, it's kind of like uh, Martin Scorsese with his editing where it's like he's yeah. not concerned about continuity. He's just concerned about the flow of the scene. Yeah. yeah. And Sam Raimi is, is just definitely doesn't care about continuity or little minor errors. It's all about just what what works for the gag. Make way. Strange one. Strange one. Yeah! 
See, now like this, if, if you watch this as a standalone movie, that opening recap that tries to set everything up does not explain does, yeah. the chainsaw arm at all. <laughs> well, the, the the wizard finds it and holds it up. But the, but why it is, why it is fitted for his stump, none of it makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. Look at that great shot through the middle of the spikes. He explains that he has to cut off his hand. That's explained in the recap. Yeah, they explain that, but they don't explain why he has a chainsaw that fits right on there. This is a great monster. It's a shame it doesn't have any articulation. That's true. It's, it's essentially a Halloween costume. It was a Halloween store hand. It sticks to that guy's face. Do you know, do you know who's in this monster costume? I do not. Sam Raimi? No. Sam it's, Raimi? I don't know the actor's name, but it's the same guy that played the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Oh. oh. In Ghostbusters. Yeah. Wow. When the time came, I heard, you know, rolling, action, and come out, Monster Bill. That was my direction. <laughs> and now! Ah! Oh, oh, this is not a good thing! Ah! <laughs> so that was my performance. Who wants some? Who's next? Huh? You. You want a little? You want some? <laughs> Had either of you seen the other Evil Dead movies before this? I did. You I did. did not. Okay. Again, I had a friend who was really into this, mm. and they would always say, Dead by Dawn, Dead by Dawn. <laughs> dead by Dawn, Dead by Dawn, Dead by Dawn, Dead by Dawn, Dead by Dawn. Yeah, I, I, had, like, I, did, I just saw the trailer for this before something, and I knew it was the guy who did Darkman. And that was all I knew. But then before it came out, I was reading in Fangoria, they had an article about it, and they mentioned that it was a sequel to the Evil Dead movies. So I was like, oh, before I see this, I got to watch those other ones, I guess. I just remember there was a moderate amount of hype around it. There was? (laughs) For this? It depends on who you knew. I I guess, yeah. It depends on certain people. But I know this was like a giant bomb when it came out because nobody knew what the hell it was. (laughs) Universal was like, we don't want to call it Evil Dead 3. They didn't want any reference to the other two movies. And we're like, why? Why wouldn't you want that? No, no, no name. So Army of Darkness, people didn't even know it was Evil Dead 3. And there were lots of people who liked Evil Dead 1 and 2. But I had a, yeah, a weekend like before we went and saw this where I rented the, the first two movies and watched them back to back. And it was a, a magical time. The, the Evil Dead trilogy kind of changed my life. This was like the series that made me kind of understand what a filmmaker was Mm. because the style is so broad that Mm -hmm. it's like like, that was where I was like, oh, somebody made these decisions, like these shots and all the the, the creativity and the weirdness is like somebody made this. The sword boy's job. <laughs> and then he just kicks him down. <laughs> the the pacing of this moment where he shoots the top of his sword off and then it cuts to all these different reaction shots yeah. and just like the shot of the uh the flag. Mm-hmm. Like the, the pacing of it is all so perfect. Yeah. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. See this? This is my boomstick! Listen up, you primitive screwheads. He has so many great lines in this. Uh, and that, that was like my my youth. <laughs> just repeating every line from this movie. <laughs> yeah, this was... I, I may have seen this movie more than any other movie ever. Because there was a period when it first came out on home video, I watched oh, yeah. it like every day after school for like six months. This is one of those ones where I knew like every sound effect even. Mm-hmm. That's that's the fun of this, and that it, it becomes even more prominent in Ash vs. Evil Dead, is that he's a complete buffoon about everything except killing monsters. Mm. He's a badass when it comes to killing demons. <laughs> he's just a guy that wants to get home, Jay. <laughs> he's just a complete selfish asshole. Which, again, they build up even more in Ash vs. Evil Dead. 
Relax, sweetheart. I'm not sticking my neck out for anybody. In fact, I'm just about to haul noogies. Ugh. Yeah, this scene particularly demonstrates that. Look at he's sitting on that. It's funny too, like I think, because this was like a reshoot. Like they didn't do this when they initially shot the movie. So if you look at Arthur's beard here, oh. it's like like glued on. It's like a cheap fake beard. Yeah. And this set's so tiny. I don't know if they shot it or if they ran out of money or what, but there was the comic book adaptation that was what the scene was originally supposed to be. There's like this big room with all these pillars mm-hmm. and the witch lady that comes up was like knocking the pillars and they were going down like dominoes. Like it was this big elaborate thing. Mm. And here we just get like a two wall set. It's fine. <laughs> it's like a, like a high school play. <laughs> and that was shot like in a garage, like a car garage, like for two days. This is how resourceful Sam is. Like we're all out of money, pal. So we're gonna have to shoot in this restroom. But just imagine, it's going to be great. It's the castle. This is where King Arthur lives in this restroom. Did they not shoot that scene? They just ran I, out of I money? I don't know. I don't. It's kind of unclear. I think they like just ran out of money or something, and they didn't shoot it. But that was the original idea for the scene, and then they ended up filming it later. And we actually built the miniature model. We shot most of the plates for it. We did some of the crumbling of the plates, but we couldn't really actually add the stage time into that whole scene. Just send me back to my own time. Pronto, today. And snap zoom. Yeah, a classic hag. Evil dead hag monster. You shall die. And this witch lady is uh, Patricia Tallman, who is like an actress and stunt person. And she started with like George Romero's camp. She was in, like, George Romero's Knight Rider, and she played Barbara in the Night of the Living Dead remake. Oh! Yeah. I think she was cast in this as more of a stunt performer, but I, I think she was on, like, Babylon 5 as, like, a regular character. One of those types of shows. Babylon 5's a big pile of shit. Get out! Yay! It's a trick. Get next. Now, here's a, yeah, here's a continuity thing. She's facing away from him. But now when we pan up and we cut to this wide shot, she pops up from behind him. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it's great. It, but, it, it, again, it doesn't matter. She's a demon. She yeah. can... <laughs> the, this is great, though. This this frantic, like, handheld camera. Yeah. It's just so, so comical. <laughs> I'm, this is terrible commentary because I'm just watching this and smiling. <laughs> That's Which true. is just, it's fucking awful for a commentary track. <laughs> I love when Sam Raimi does these things, though, where there's like a whole sequence where every shot is kind of done in this the one particular, like this one, every mm. shot has that. It's not like crazy Michael Bay shaky cam. No. It's following the shot. It's just jittery until Vibration. the sequence, until the, yeah, until the sequence is done. And then when it's done, you know, we get a lockdown shot like this. Yeah, it's not, it's not like action movie exciting. It's, it's almost... There's, there's a specific It's like style. the scene has too much energy, and so the camera... <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's... And here's, a, here's another one where every shot is a snap zoom for this little yeah, sequence. Yeah, this is... This is uh... Where he makes the nonsensical robot arm. I hate the robot arm. I was disappointed because I was like, oh, I want him to have the chainsaw through the whole yeah. movie. And it never really comes back. I know why. Sure. Yeah. So he doesn't have to have a stump the whole movie. I mean, yeah, and it, it, they indicate here it could crush a, a goblet, <laughs> but then he never really uses it for its crushing powers. No. This man is an engineering genius. Why does he work at S-Mart? <laughs> Don't touch that, please. Your primitive intellect wouldn't understand alloys and compositions and things with molecular structures in the... But I love this scene, uh, Rewatching it the other day. It was like, it's the scene... Where they ha- they have their bond, they have a little fight, you know, they make up. Yeah. But it's so, like, shortened and almost <laughs> self-aware. Oh, yeah. Be- uh, of, well, they of don't the- make up. He just walks up to her and they start kissing. Exactly. He's, <laughs> he's like, give me that. They don't ah. bond over anything in particular. No, right. <laughs> it's, it's what would be a longer scene in a movie with more dialogue and more gravity and, you know, yeah, characterization. They get to know each other. Yeah. 
His fiance died yesterday. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made this. I made this for thee. I need another horse blanket. And, <laughs> and she slaps him, and then he says, uh, "Give me some sugar. Give me some sugar, baby." It's it's like it's like Sam Raimi knew the scene had to happen. Yeah, but he just didn't want to write a whole scene. Yeah, so he just wrote like just, four lines. He treated it's a joke. The whole movie is a joke. Yeah, and it's, you're either in on it or you're not. It's bordering on like a naked gun scene. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, what's the story with this castle? Is that a miniature or a matte painting or what? Uh, I think it's a miniature, but I'm not positive. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's clearly like, composited in, but yeah. yeah, I don't know exactly what it is. It's that castle in Southern California. Oh, yeah. Here we are. Speaking Vasquez of rocks. yeah, and this is the famous Vasquez rocks, rocks, which is most well known from being in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Uh huh. That's the, there's nothing else. Nothing else. This is where Kirk fought the Gorn. Rich knows that though. <laughs> you and I know that. I don't even need to say that. Well, Ian Abercrombie was on Star Trek, right? That guy has to have been on Star Trek at some point. Probably. Everybody's been on fucking Star Trek. He's been on Star Trek. <laughs> I think we've heard enough of your lies, Tommy boy. I say we tie them up to the lamppost in the square and show them how spirit folk were dealt with in the olden days. I know him as Mr. Pitt, Elaine's boss on Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. When thou retrievest the book from its cradle, you must recite the words. Push the whopper button! Push the whopper button! Okay. Well, repeat them. Yeah, look at Bruce Campbell's hair in the scene. It's like twice oh, yeah. as long. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I know your damn words. All right. Here we get some more kind of moody Evil Dead uh, stuff. Someone has a smoke machine just off camera. No, R two. What are you doing? Watch that, will you? Honestly, this is where the movie kind of falls apart for me. Oh, yeah, the second act's bad. Yeah, the second act's terrible. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Oh, there's lots of fun stuff in the second act. Yeah, but the the fun stuff, though, with the whole premise is him, of him going back into time is him interacting with people from the past. And That's then, true. You have this whole section in the middle of the movie where he's just on his own. See, my favorite stuff in Evil Dead 2 is when he's by himself and just going crazy in the cabin, and it's just like the Bruce Campbell show. Sure, but you can watch Evil Dead 2 for that. Yeah. I think, I think these scenes just kind of waste the premise. Mm. Yes, I agree with Rich. That's fair. And then this feels like the second act needed Evil Dead stuff, like this, ca- like the, the camera the following. Famous Ooh. Evil Dead point of view shots. Yeah. yeah, and then the banging on the door, and all, and then I hate the little ashes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I like the idea behind him, but it, the execution of the it execution is... is yeah. I openly hate that whole sequence of the movie. Oh, my yeah. God. I do. I do. Uh, too silly? Did Just he take too, it too far? Too wrong for this movie, mm. for what this movie should be. Yeah, his quest needed to uh, to find the book. Needed a couple scenes with him going to things you've seen in medieval movies. He needed a right? posse with him of of sure. like Arthur and uh, Robin and his yeah. merry men kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We've got to go to this village. And all these and, little uh, obstacles he has to face along right. the way to the main, yeah. I, what's I, what's a trope from Oh, jeez. Like a uh like a he's got a battle a night, uh, a jousting tournament. You really put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> ooh, ooh, some kind of wizard asking him riddles. Okay, a, ri- a guy yeah. at a bridge asking, like, what's in um, uh, 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 the fucking Monty Python movie, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, there's the guy who gets all of his limbs cut off, or he yeah. has to, he's guarding the bridge or whatever. Right, yes. He needs he needs the three... Uh, or Deathstalker 2, when Deathstalker has to get in a wrestling match mm. with the woman from Glow. There you go. Yeah, this, this sort of seems like they wanted to recreate some of this oh, yeah. weird stuff. I, from... I get. Th- I understand why they'd want to do yeah. that because Evil Dead Two is arguably the best movie ever made. Groovy. <laughs> <laughs> and yet we're here doing the commentary for Army of Darkness Woo! instead. <laughs> I mean, declaring any movie your favorite is always silly because. 
your favorite movie can change depending upon your mood. But sure, mm-hmm. Evil Dead Two it's in, it's in the mix there for me. Oh yeah, that's fair. I do like the. He almost says it sarcastically when he wakes up and he's like, "What a horrible nightmare!" <laughs> like the whole <laughs> it's the whole situation is just too stupid. This uh, this Looney Tunes stuff. I don't know. <laughs> these 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 large scale miniature sets are kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah, I think as an isolated sequence, this is kind of fun, even though the, the effects, the composite is not great at all. Just th- uh, uh, just be thankful we're watching the U.S. theatrical cut, because the international cut, this is like twice as long. Oh, no. They drop a bucket on his head, and there's some slapstick with that. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, Gulliver's Travels thing, right? Then, yeah. Uh, I guess the point of the... Oh, look at ma- those wires. Oh, mm-hmm. man, HD has not done this movie kind. You can see the little mat around where the thing jumps into his mouth. Yeah. Well, I'm holding his nose. Look, look terrible. The effects in this movie are not good. <laughs> but, but that's not the point. Some of them are fun. It's not like Evil Dead 2 where all the effects are... It's it's like the perfect use of everything, of like stop motion and creature effects and the, this one. I, I think they got a little too. I mean, I'm fine with them going ambitious because that kind of makes the movie funnier. So here he's pouring boiling hot water down his throat to burn the guy, but he does not burn his mouth. <laughs> I used to always think like, oh, that's how he got his, the the evil Ash got his face fucked up. He got burnt. <laughs> In the stomach, and then I always forget that he oh he comes out normal. Shoots him in the face with a shotgun. Shot in the face with a shotgun. I like the shot coming up here. Yeah, the eyeball. eyeball. It's so gross. God, but then instead of any sort of effect bigger. to see the thing growing out of him, just ADR line where he says it's getting bigger. Do you suppose Universal was, was watching like the dailies of this and just thinking, oh God, what have we done? <laughs> well, that's no, this wasn't no, made by Universal. They just distributed it. Oh, they just... They, it was, a, a, uh, yeah, they picked it up after it was already made. But oh, the fact okay. that they watched the finished movie and said, we can sell this is pretty amazing. Turn it off! No, Sam Raimi made this in his backyard, Rich. <laughs> this front is on the weekend. I think Universal was maybe hoping that because Darkman was a, a decent uh, success that maybe they could get more of that audience. <laughs> yeah, I like in Evil Dead 2, the more, like when he, his reflection comes out of the mirror and he's like tormenting himself, it's a little more psychological. This is just goofiness. And that rubber tree just completely wiggled when he hit it. No, no. The force of the impact was so severe. That it, <laughs> it ripped the roots. A, it rocked a normal tree. Okay, sure. <laughs> I always used to say, why why doesn't he have a, like a, a line right before he shoots him in the face? Because he's saving it. I ain't that good. Good. Bad. I'm the guy with the gun. And here's the here's a recreation of the uh, uh, Evil Dead 2 scene. Yeah. This is more in line with the tone. Yeah. This particular series of shots. Certainly not Little Ashes. Yeah, I guess Ash cuts them up here. They kind of got rid of the idea that you have to completely dismember them in this movie because all the, the demons he's killed so far at this point, he just kind of shoots them. Well, that's pretty painstaking. <laughs> well, that was part of the whole mythology think, in the other movies. I think peasants just come in later and they hack the bodies up. Oh, okay. We just don't see that. Yeah, we don't see it. That's fair. Oh, 
and he always builds crosses in all these movies. I never understood it. Oh, at their graves? Yeah. yeah. I think it's just to indicate that he's buried them in a grave. Sure. Well, that's a, it becomes a great joke in Ash vs. Evil Dead. That's right, yeah, they make a joke about that. You know they were Jewish, right? I I did not. Wish it could have said something before I made those dumb crosses, but... Da-da-dun, da-da-dun. We should talk about the music. The music's amazing in this movie. We're listening to it with the sound off. I can't even fucking hear it. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, main theme by Danny Elfman, and then the rest of the score is Joe LaDuca, who's done all these movies. See, this is kind of what you're talking about, where he has to have his little challenges. Yeah. It's a bit questy, but we need some interactions. Sure. Not, not spend the last 15 minutes completely by himself. Mm-hmm. It's fine. It's fine. This is. I think it could be better. It's fine. Rich and I just hate the windmill. Okay? <laughs> it's just the all that stuff and everything to do with it. <laughs> That's fair. It's a small por- portion of the movie. Yeah. It has a great, great first act and a great last act. A really great first the, act, though. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's definitely the Everything's strongest stuff in the movie. Everything's perfect about it. The battle, the battle's epic. There are some problems. <laughs> you got to put epic in quotes. That's a great makeup appliance, though. Yeah. That's not his real face being stretched? No. That per- there is... is now, the, the, I know the there's the international cut where this goes on a little bit longer. In this truncated U.S. cut, it's actually funnier how he's shaking his head and just hard cut to him... I think it's after this one yeah. where he just starts talking. <laughs> I vividly remember seeing this in the theater and everybody laughing at the movie at that point. How do you know what they were laughing at? I, it's possible they were in on the joke, but I don't think so. I think you're supposed to laugh at this movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, you laugh at movies that aren't aware of how ridiculous they are. Well, this movie is. This movie's aware of how ridiculous oh, it is. So, you, so, so you're well, laughing with it. Okay. Well, you said the audience was laughing at it. I, I think the audience that I saw it with was oh, laughing at they, it. Like they thought it was supposed to be serious. Like they didn't know what they were getting into. Yeah, I which guess. Which is why this movie was a big flop. I don't like the uh, new look of the Necronomicon in this, though. And why is that? I don't know. It looks too clean. I like the, the janky Evil Ed 2 book. Da, da, da. This one looks too. Da, da, da. Con- that. It's it looks too constructed. Like the whole idea is that it was like bound in human flesh, and here it looks like somebody like sculpted that cover, as opposed to just being a face that's awkwardly stretched over the front of it. I remember you had a version of this movie uh, uh, that was made from the Necronomicon. You did, Jay. It was like no, I had Evil Dead too. Oh, that yeah, yeah. Foam, it was foam latex, yeah, like, and it just started falling apart. Like, it, yeah, that like thing was that, that was like a gimmick. It. Thing was not built to last. They had one for Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two. How much did they charge for it? I don't remember. This was like fifteen years ago. They got his money though. I don't. I don't know if any series of movies has been re-released more <laughs> than these three. Did you mean the Book of the Dead edition or the Ultimate Edition DVD? What's the difference? Or maybe you were talking about the limited edition Blu-ray. Is that all the same movie? Or did you mean the limited edition tin of Evil Dead 2? (laughs) Or there's also the 25th anniversary Blu-ray of Evil Dead 2. What? Or maybe you were talking about the Book of the Dead edition of Evil Dead 2. (laughs) Don't get me started on Army of Darkness. Why do you have all those? Because my life is an empty shell. Push the Whopper! 